The release of the new Lightning Electric F-150 from Ford has the RV world in a bit of a tizzy over electric vehicles and their implications for towing trailers. So today, I wanted to separate the fact from fiction over the realities of electric vehicles as heavy work machines and share with you some reasons you might want to consider canceling that $100 deposit you've placed on your Lightning or your Tesla Cybertruck if your main intent is towing a trailer over any decent distance. First. Let me say that this is not an anti-electric vehicle rant. I love electric vehicles. Besides the environmental considerations, which are considerable, even when you factor in a lot of the not so pretty things about mining precious metals and chemicals for batteries, they're just great driving machines. They're quiet, they're quick, they're powerful, they're safe, and they don't need transmissions, emission systems, turbos, belts, fuel pumps, oil changes. In fact, some have absolutely no scheduled maintenance for the first 150,000 miles. And if you're worried about having to change the batteries out someday, well, current real world studies show that after 150,000 miles, most Tesla batteries have lost only 8% of their capacity. At that rate, the batteries could retain 80% capacity at 500,000 miles and potentially last well over a million miles. The average lifespan of a gas car is about 140,000 miles. So if you think electric cars aren't ready as a legitimate replacement for internal combustion, I disagree, except for in one area distance towing and hauling, which is what most of us do with our RV trailers. Let's get into the two main reasons why. Number one, range. All vehicles suffer a major mileage reduction when you put them under a greater load. Our gasoline powered truck gets about 17 miles per gallon unloaded on the highway, and it drops to about 10 when we're pulling our 9,000 pound trailer. In addition, you need to overcome drag, and pulling a big box behind you forces whatever motor you have to work much harder. Now, our truck isn't rated for fuel mileage by the EPA, but my guess, if it was, it'd be rated for about 20 miles per gallon on the highway. That's with no load, 150 pound driver, which I'm certainly not, and 150 pound passenger. So I'm likely getting about half the fuel mileage towing that my vehicle can get in peak conditions. It works the same way with electric vehicles. Jack Johnson is the CEO and co-founder of Volta Power Systems, which makes battery-powered electrical systems for high-end RV manufacturers. He also built the first large-format lithium-ion facility in the U.S. when he worked at Johnson Controls. The man knows lithium-ion batteries as well as anyone. I asked him to share more technical details about how towing affects range. Hi, Jason. Remember, a battery is just another form of a fuel tank. Yes, it's energy already converted, but really is used as a storage medium to carry your consumable fuel. You can't replace it um, and you can't generate it on the fly. Now, if you've got a vehicle that can propel itself to like the Ford Lightning to 300 miles um, on one charge, it's going to be around some very specific conditions. And the weight of that vehicle to propel it down the road at a certain speed will be a certain amount of work. And that's going to be used up in, in watt hours consumed per mile or watt hours per mile. No different than how much fuel you burn per mile. Now, if you double the amount of work, for instance, you put on a trailer that weighs just as much and it's not very aerodynamic. So you're going to basically pull a second vehicle and to make it easy to understand, you're going to say, hey, I'm roughly going to double the amount of work. In theory, you're doubling the amount of energy consumption you're going to need to drive that down the road. Now, take the Ford Lightning as an example. We'll assume you get the larger battery pack, which boasts a 300 mile range and 10,000 pounds of towing capacity. Jack says that Ford has the same battery cell tech as many other car manufacturers supplied by LG Chem. The energy densities are the same and the motors will be similar. The estimated power burn rate on the Rivian and the Hummer is around 500 watt hours per mile. To go 300 miles, Ford's pack has to be around 150 kilowatt hours. Now, doubling the load or double the work would be 1,000 watt hours per mile. Assuming one mile per minute or 60 miles per hour, that'd be around three hours of driving and you're out. The Ford Lightning weighs a whopping 7,000 pounds, so towing a 7,000 pound trailer, double its weight, is doing roughly double the work. So we're talking 150 miles of range in peak conditions, or about three hours at 60 miles per hour. 
No air conditioner, no heat, no hills, no mountains, no stop and go traffic. Plenty of people have already performed lots of towing with electric vehicles, particularly the Tesla Model X, which actually has nearly 5,000 pounds of towing capacity. The real world results range from about a 50% reduction in range on a track in ideal conditions to as much as 80% with any serious towing under real world conditions. So with the bigger battery, the low end of your real world towing range could be as low as 60 miles. In addition, power decreases drastically as you get nearer to a drained battery. And who wants to risk running out of juice? So you'll likely only want to drive 80% of that range. Now we're down to 120 miles under ideal conditions with a 150 pound driver or as low as 48 miles in the real world. Tesla's Cybertruck promises a little bit better range than Ford, maxing out at 500 miles peak range, but that's partially because it's a lighter vehicle. So towing 6,000 pounds, double its weight, you could still get as low as only 80 miles of range out of the Cybertruck, and at the very best, under ideal conditions, 200 miles. Now, the second downfall of towing any major distance with an electric vehicle is charging. The electric fuel charging network is starting to get very, very robust, but it's also very urban. You're gonna have a harder time finding electric charging stations in rural areas where most of us camp. They exist and more and more are coming, but it's a process. There are also competing technologies out there. A Ford Lightning can't charge on Tesla's superchargers. Luckily, Ford owners will be able to choose from about 63,000 chargers around the country, those 460 volt chargers that you see all over parking lots. They'll be able to charge the F-150 Lightning from 15% to 80% in about 40 minutes. That last 20% of charge, however, takes a lot longer. And most people who drive Tesla's studies show are charging them between 80 and 90%. So that's another reduction in range of 10 to 20 percent and charging at the campground or home is likely to take a lot longer than you think if you install a 240 volt charger at your home you might be able to charge to full overnight but more likely it'll take closer to 24 hours to get empty to full and if you plug into a standard 120 volt outlet say at a campground now you're looking at the better part of a week it's just a massive amount of power and for those reasons anything more than a bit of a top off from solar or a generator is highly unrealistic so you're definitely going to want to use those commercial chargers while you're traveling but here's the real kicker how many of those chargers have you seen that would allow for a vehicle pulling a trailer to fit electric vehicles are here and they're going to make our roads much different and if you just want to pull a small trailer to your local state park or your, your boat to the lake sure one of these electric trucks might work for you don't forget you also need enough juice to get back home they're certainly going to be very popular with fleet owners like construction companies fire stations and public works departments but distance towing it's just not a realistic option yet let me know what you think in the comments make sure to like and subscribe if you want more content like this and we'll see you on the next video